shut up. Get out of my closet. So if this were in the museum, we'd have it, you know, probably more mysteriously displayed. But this, these are actual garments that we wear in our rituals. Yeah, we have uh, just regular hangers from regular uh, hangers. Lord Gerard cleaners <laughs> and a uh, 10 for a buck kind of deals over here. These That's hangers right. and all the metal and uh, things kind of uh, put in bags here. Looks like my closet. <laughs> okay, so that's a uh, look at the closet. Where hey, I never said the closet was exciting. Where do zombies, how did zombies come about in the voodoo religion? What, what, what happened there? Is, was that a Hollywood glitch or Actually, is there some reality there? there? This, as usual, in most folk tales, it is reality based. Um, it's a practice that really began in Haiti. Um, when a person has either opened their mouth or done something really, really terrible in a community, um, they would be given a potion. One of the main ingredients came from the blowfish, and this would render them... Uh, That's poisonous, right? Oh, definitely. Um, this would... It makes the heart slow down to a rate where you appear to be dead. Um, you are totally... Uh, you just appear to be dead, and you're not really dead. It's like the living dead, and you're buried in the ground. And the zombie ritual is you're left in the ground, and you're brought up a couple days later when you have totally been depleted of any oxygen to the brain, and you're thus rendered a zombie. Um, you're a slave. So it's, it's a disgrace. It's not something that's done to honor someone. It's a disgrace. Can this actually happen? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, I don't know if you've seen the, I hate to bring up Hollywood, but The Serpent in the Rainbow um, was a movie that was pretty much the central focus was about zombies and um, this man's mission to find the potion that rendered people lifeless looking. Um, and it's real. They really do have this potion. Um, it's very dangerous. I do not recommend going there and trying this stuff out. Um, but he did. And, you know, he ended up okay afterwards. But the stuff does exist. And um, it's very potent. And these, uh, the, the symptoms of, you know, death. Yeah. You know, it look you look dead. You can't scream. You can't shout. You can't lift your arms and say, "I'm not dead. Don't bury me." Mm -hmm. You just you can't move. You're paralyzed, basically. It just that's pretty much what it does is bring on paralysis. So you can imagine it's very frightening being buried and being conscious even, but not being able to scream and tell them, "I'm alive. Don't do this." But when you uh, shut off the oxygen to the brain, doesn't that doesn't that kill you? It, it should, but the thing about this potion is that it slows down your metabolism and your system so much, kind of like if you were down in the, if you fell in frozen ice and, you know, you crack through the surface, you know, we have miracles of people that lived through that experience simply because of what that freezing did to their body. It preserved them. This is what this potion does. It not only makes you, you know, look lifeless, but that's how it does it. It slows down your metabolism to the point where you could actually survive, but it doesn't help your brain at all. Your oxygen's still not going to your brain, and you're either going to end up dead or a complete slave with no function of the brain. So in other words, uh, this process, uh, uh, you require less oxygen to the brain to keep living than... Uh, you, well, you require less of everything simply because your metabolism is Does it need as much? To, 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 you know, instead of boom, 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 you're down to boom, boom. Right. You're down so slow that you require less of everything, but this doesn't stop terrible things from happening to you. Can you can you be revived? Uh, can can things be quickened up? And or is have, this a? I have absolutely no idea. I've never gone through the process of zombification, and I don't know anyone that has. So then, zombies. Uh, it, 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 I I don't know how prevalent it is, but zombies. This uh, unite. It, it's the living dead. It's truly the living dead. And it um, does, and it can, and it does happen. It can and does happen. It's not something I like to promote, but you also have to understand this is a black magic practice. This is not a traditional voodoo practice. This is, this has to do, yes, it's in the Haitian culture, and yes, a large percent of Haiti is, you know, voodoo. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand this is a black magic practice. And just because something happens in Haiti doesn't make it automatically valid voodoo.
Mm -hmm. You do not endorse this. We do not endorse this, and uh, authentic voodoo practitioners do not endorse this. Uh, voodoo is a ha not even Haitian voodoo practitioners endorse this. So it's a happier religion than we are led to believe. Well, it's, it's not happy, but yeah, it's, I mean, a lighter. Uh, it's 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 simply that it's not evil. I won't say it's light and you know all fun, but. You know, these people that practice voodoo are just like everyone else. You've got happy voodooists, you've got melancholy voodooists, you've got complaining voodooists. You know, they're just regular people, you know, using their right to choose this path to God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, might be a Catholic next door, might be a voodooist next door, might be a Lutheran next door, might be Jewish next door. Who knows? But all this is is another pathway to God. Do do that voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Visions, a series of uh, visits to almost every uh, really unique spot uh, in the world. And we are with uh, Brandy with an I, Kelly. I, I hope you don't mind Brandy with an I, Kelly. And uh, Brandy is the director of the New Orleans, New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum. Okay, what a mouthful. We are, uh, we're in the back office, as it were, of, of the museum. And then in a little while, we're going to be with Prince. Uh, not formally known as Prince, now a signal or a sign. Uh, this is another <laughs> Prince altogether, and we'll be uh, we'll be in the front of the museum with Prince in a little while. So we're we going to go back to the workshop now. We're going to go back to the craft room where we make craft our room. food dolls. Okay, opening up the door. I'm opening the door. Okay. The craft room. Uh oh, uh, where yeah the the craft. The, whoops, I just got hit with something. Oh, it was the the cord okay. from the light. Can you hear over this music? Sure, music is fine. Um, this is where we make all of our voodoo dolls. Um, we make these gray gray bags. Uh, I know you can't see them over the air, but they're little red flannel bags that we fill with herbs and anoint with oil. In fact, Prince Mugabe, the man that's going to be taking you on the tour of the museum later, is uh, our foremost grigri maker. Oh, so we're in we're in good hands. You're in sir. good hands. He's had uh, he's made grigris for fertility. Had the people write him back that they've had the child. Um, I don't know if he's had anyone named after him yet, but we'll see. Well, uh, as Prince a, uh, uh, we're going to find out a little. So I'll save the question. The question will be: Is Prince a title or a first name? So we'll hold off and we'll don't answer that. We'll get it. Okay, so we're in the workshop now, or the craft shop, and uh, what are we looking at? Just a whole bunch of stuff on the table here. What right now, here? this well, this is the mess that comes from creativity. That's Lisa sneaking away right now, our main craft employee. Um, is that her name, sneaking away? Yes, <laughs> right. And the Lisa <laughs> sneaking away. Yeah, uh, sneaking away. <laughs> Um, Made name or uh, now Lisa sneaking away, uh, Miss sneaking away. What what is her work here and uh, what's what does she do here? She is the main producer of our voodoo dolls. Um, she is an artist is the only way I can put it. She's very creative. She makes dolls like these, the decorative doll with all types of you know little horseshoe baubles, even a king cake plastic baby. She comes up with all kinds of great ideas and puts her art into our voodoo dolls. What is the significance of the horseshoes and the, the baby? Well, the horseshoes are for good luck, and the yeah. king cake baby is, it could be thought of as a sign of rebirth, but it's, these are pretty much more touristy dolls. Mm -hmm. They're not dolls that are really meant for, um, you know, serious use. We sell dolls that are for serious use, but this is more of, you know, some people just want a curio item that isn't a serious voodoo doll because it might frighten them even though it shouldn't. They're used primarily for healing, contrary to what you've heard. They shouldn't be frightened, but occasionally are. So we offer some, dec this is called a decorative doll, and it's just what it says. It's for decoration only. It's a black doll with sort of an afro, I guess. Now, why is the some of the oh, horseshoes yeah. moss? What moss? Uh, what? Are, why is some of the horseshoes uh, uh, upside down and the others uh, right side up? Uh, you know, in reverse, some probably, facing down, facing up. Probably for looks value, but the thought is that when the horseshoes turned upside down, which is um, an up, uh, upside down U, let's say, it's the luck spilling out. It's a Cajun tradition to hang. A horseshoe above your house with in the with the U right side up, and that's supposed to hold your good luck in. The U facing now, up, a, right. a regular U. A regular U. Right. Now, if it's facing down, the luck spills out. So maybe she's got the luck spilling out the arms, and she's catching it here on the legs. So that's the uh, the luck spills out upside down. Okay, and now voodoo dolls with uh, pins in them. Uh, how can that be good for the for the for the whoever it's? designed for. I mean, pins sticking in the heart and the legs. Isn't that supposed to create all sorts of uh, uh, anguish? 
Uh, and, how, and how come that's good? Okay, basically the dolls are used. Um, although voodoo is a religion, it's not just the magical practices associated with the religion. We do use dolls, but if you see a pin stuck in the heart, it's probably for health reasons, to help the person with heart problems. If it's stuck in the head of the doll, it might be to help headaches. Um, people just assume when they see a pin stuck in a doll that it's for something negative because that's all they've been exposed to in films. Is because it's very exciting to see these, you know, crazy things going on in movies. But in reality, I mean, let's face it: how many would pay to see a movie if people are getting healed with dolls? That's boring. Nobody yeah. wants to see anyone get healed. They want to see blood, guts, and gore. But in reality, um, it's. The voodooist adheres to the law of karma. They're not going to be hexing or sticking pins in dolls to hurt people because it's going to come right back on them. Did you see the Witches of Eastwick? I sure did. I sure now did. I know that I know that you, uh, as you say, I know that you're against uh, uh, making voodoo and, and dolls with pins stucking in them. Uh, you know, turning it into a Hollywood type thing. But again, Jack Nicholson played the baddie, uh, the devil. Uh, what did you think of the way they treated the, the voodoo and the the dolls? I thought well, it was really great. The thing is, is that there was nothing to do with voodoo in that film. Uh, but the doll, of course, uh, very voodoo-like. Um, yes, but the thing is, is that you have to understand the doll is commonly associated with the practice of voodoo, but uh, dolls and effigies are used by many, many cultures, just about every culture, to try to affect reality. Um, it's, a, it's a form of magic called sympathetic magic that, you know, started God knows when with clay figures of animals with little thorns poked in them to try to ensure a great hunt in reality. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this has been going on since the dawn of time, the use of effigies and dolls to affect reality. So it's like, the voodooist uses this, but so do many other cultures. Um, as far as the witches of Eastwick, this was the devil. Mm -hmm. um, there is no Satan in voodoo. So, you know, we can't make any tie into voodoo and the witches of Eastwick or Jack Nicholson, unfortunately. I have to tell you, it's the most wonderful, some of the imagery was terrific. I and mean, that the wind and the, uh, and the getting the ice cream and then getting, you know, oh, coming yeah. into the church. It was just a wonderful, wonderful, uh, some great imagery in that film. Right. Well, I'm, not say, I'm not saying that the misuse of the tools of this religion by Hollywood don't make for great entertainment. I'm just saying they're simply not the reality of the religion. You don't get voodooists that are true to their religion using the dolls for those purposes. But as Hollywood well knows, it makes for great television and movies. So they'll continue to misrepresent this religion because it's paying off so far. Well, it was right in that case anyway. Uh, you're not from New Orleans, are you? I sure am. You really, you you sound New York. Do I? I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound New Orleans or you don't sound Louisiana at all. I've, but you see, many people have a twisted idea of what New Orleans people are supposed to sound like. We have New Orleans people that sound like this. We have New Orleans people that sound like this, darling. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have so many dialects here. In New Cajun Orleans. and yeah, I mean Cajun. We have so many dialects here. You, no one could pinpoint what what is a New Orleans accent. Nobody here could tell you. Why is it the Big Easy? That is a name that they came up with. Believe me, no one in New Orleans called it the Big Easy before that movie came out. Mm -hmm. I'll be real upfront with you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you ask why, I think it has become known as the Big Easy, um, just because times are relaxed here um you know i haven't been for new york for long periods of time but it does seem a little more rush rush and other regions all over the country seem a lot more rush rush here things re people relax people take their time mm -hmm. i'm not saying people are slow or you know anything like that or you don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. but give a lot of confident people that just aren't in such a rush to fly through life. They take a little more time to smell the roses, as they say. You spent a lot of time in New York or some time in New York? No, that's what I was just saying. I didn't spend much time there, <laughs> but I spent enough to know that it was way too fast-paced for me. 
Okay, yeah, well, that's I love it down here, but but it, the heat is really oppressive here. It's it's a heat like I've never felt before. Really, really hot here. I mean, you it's know just that we had um, we've had less incidents of death due to the heat this year by the elderly and poor than ever. And in Chicago, I was reading today, they've had like hundreds of deaths. Prince was saying, uh, Prince was saying over 400 people mm -hmm. uh, have been found dead, which is uh, which is incredible. Incredible. I just think that um, the incidents get less and less every year here because, I mean, we've got a great news team here, all the channels 4, 6, and 8 that just constantly have... Uh